Hi folks, this is Paul Campbell from MakeCNCWorkshops.com uh, Today I'm going to give you a short tutorial on how to use the MakeCNC Scale Calculator in conjunction with Coral Draw to resize our patterns to fit the exact material thickness that you're using. For instance, if you go to your supplier and you purchase uh, a sheet of quarter inch plywood uh, and you measure that with calipers when you get home, you're probably going to find out that instead of being 0 0.250, which is a quarter of an inch, it may be something like 0.28 or it might even be 0.23. So it's probably never going to be exactly 0.25. And to make our patterns work properly, you need to make sure that the slot sizes on the pattern match uh, the thickness of your wood. Also, another thing I want to mention um, before we go too far is about laser kerf. This is a new addition here that you can see uh, for our scale calculator that takes into account laser kerf. Now if you're not familiar with what laser kerf is, uh, if you have a CNC router and you create a toolpath around say a four inch square and you cut out that four inch square from a piece of plywood, uh, the tool machines along the outside of the vector line. So the edge of the tool machines along the outside of the vector line. So when you cut it out, you look at your part, put a pair of calipers on, it's going to be exactly four inches by four inches. This is not the case with a, a laser. A laser machines with the line in the center of the beam. So instead of on the outside, it's in the center. So half of that beam width is taking off a half a beam with too much material and you have to adjust your uh, slot sizes when you scale to take that kerf into account and something similar goes on with plasma cutters as well so this little new addition allows you to put in the kerf of your laser which is half of the laser beams thickness now I know this sounds like it's going to be a very small figure because that beam is so fine but believe me it does actually make quite a difference to uh, how the parts fit together at the end of the day. Okay, so the second thing is that I want to talk about before we go too far into this tutorial is about what happens when you import DXF files into Corel Draw. Most of our DXF files are made using programs like AutoCAD or Vectric Aspire, uh, Autodesk Inventor, etc. And when we create them, we create layers. I mean, we'll have an engraving layer, and make CNC's case, we put our engraving layer. Uh, on a red layer which is red lines that shows the engraving lines and we put our cut uh, lines as black but for some reason the import uh, filter for Corel Draw changes the color of the line and uh, changes it to a type of brown we have no clue why it does that it's just an anomaly in Corel Draw and it also can distort the files on odd occasions so make CNC started to uh, add a couple of years ago CDR files to the package when you purchase a file from us and the CDR file is actually Corel Draw's native format and so it's going to avoid those types of issues. It can also change the line weight from uh, hairline to something else and when you're cutting with a laser you need hairline so just be aware that when you bring in a file uh, you may have to do some alterations to its line thickness and to its color to get everything correct for cutting on your laser. The other thing I want to mention uh, is that I'm not going to cover it in this tutorial but when you bring in uh, your files into, a, into, uh, into Corel Draw and you see here I've got a page size probably eight and a half by 11 your laser cutting area is not going to be that and so when you bring the files in you're going to need to ungroup the parts after you've done your scaling ungroup the parts and lay them out correctly on the page for your particular lasers cutting area so that they don't come we it's been possible for us to to lay them out for everybody's different type of, of, of size laser cutting area bed okay so let's move on here what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a file and I'm going to import this bison file here which is actually says 1-4 which means one quarter of an inch slots and when I do, you'll see a little window pop up. A couple of things to make sure. Make sure your auto-reduce nodes is not checked. Make sure that 
your units are set to the units you're using. In other words, if you're using a uh, if you're using uh, a metric file, then set to metric. If you're using an inch file, then set to inch. Over here, you'll see scaling. Always make sure that's set to one to one ratio. You need to bring the file in one to one, or it's going to mess up the file scale, and you'll be lost after that. So once you've got those set, we we'll hit OK. And you get a couple of little rulers up here that allow you to position where you're going to put the DXF. So I'm just going to slide it up there, click there. And then now we've got our bison who's just come in here. And if you look at it, straight away you're going to see that the line has been changed to brown. But uh, I'm not going to bother changing the line colours for this tutorial. We're still at here line, so that's okay. But you may have to change these things around to suit how your laser works for your particular purpose. But for this tutorial, it's going to be about the scale calculator. Okay, so if I come in here and I zoom into one of the slots, and I take the parallel dimensioning tool here, and I click on one of the nodes, and then I drag that across to the other node, and then pull that out, you're going to see that it says 0.25. So my pattern slots are exactly set to a quarter of an inch. Then off I go to my uh, with my set of digital calipers to my uh, material and I measure it and it says it's 0.128 or sorry, 0.28. So let's say it's a little over a quarter of an inch, which would make our whole uh, our whole pattern parts fitting together sloppy. So uh, we'll pop up our scale calculator here and we're going to put a figure into the calculator where we're going to say our original size is 0.25. And we want our new size to be 0.28. Okay, so we've got original material thickness that equals 0.25, which is actually our slot size. The new material thickness we want to fit our material is 0.28. And the width of vectors to be scaled is the next thing that we've got to put in there. I'm just going to take that figure out that's in there at the moment. Now, in uh, corral what we'll need to do next is make sure we've got our pick tool there we need to come up and we need to select all of the parts okay so we've got all those selected when we do that we're going to have a bunch of figures come up up here okay now that the X and Y is the position of all those parts on the page what we're looking for is the X and Y size of those actual parts as a group and you can see it says hundred percent hundred percent and there's a little lock here. It's very important to make sure that that little lock is closed, that that is locked, because what that does is it locks the aspect ratio, which means it locks that figure to that figure. So if we change that figure by any percentage, it's going to scale the entire set of parts drawings uniformly. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to come in and we're going to select, highlight that there. We're going to right click, we're going to copy. When you do that, make sure you don't include that little set of quotation marks that Corel Draw has there because that'll mess up the scale calculator. Okay, so now we come back to the scale calculator and you'll see width x of vectors to be scaled. We're going to click in there and we're going to control V. We want to take that zero out, be a little careful there that you uh, don't get that in there. So we've got 8.127 and then we're going to hit calculate. Okay, and here's what's happened. Down here we have a little button that we've got ticked, and that says copy. That means that what we just calculated when we hit the calculate key is copied to the clipboard. You can't see it, but it's copied into the clipboard uh, of the computer. And because the radio button is set on this option, which is says for Vectric and Corel Draw users, new value in X, it copied that value into the clipboard. So now we can come up to the top and we delete that out and we go control V and we copy in that new figure and we hit enter now if you were looking at the screen you'd have seen that this all scaled up a little bit if we come in here in that dimension you can now see that we're set at point one to a point two eight sorry and so that means all these slots now are all going to be point two eight and uh, that's it folks as simple as that pretty easy to use oh and of course don't forget I didn't I didn't add in the curve of my laser if I'd have added in the curve of my laser half the width of the beam then um, 
that figure would have been different and this would have been slightly slightly different to uh, to to take that into account but that's pretty much uh, how it's done and uh, just before I go I will say that a couple of things that I've been asked by people uh, just quickly it's not really covered for this tutorial but I should let you know if I click on that now and you see the leg I can move that leg out now I can rotate that I can do what I want so if I want to lay all these parts out differently for uh, my particular laser then I can um, something else to know too and that is if I put this little fella just back here and I want to select all of those and then I want to group them I can come up to object and I can go to the group functions and say group objects okay now if I've grouped them all I can move them entirely as a set now that works in reverse if I bring in a bunch of objects like this and they're already grouped to break them apart I just need to go up to object and then I need to go down to group and I need to go ungroup all objects and now what that's done is it's ungrouped everything so that I can select things individually and then move them around to arrange my parts so that I can uh, arrange them to fit best on my laser. So just a little addition there. But anyway, I hope this uh, tutorial has helped you somewhat and makes things a bit easier for you with your laser cutting. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Oh yes, and there will be a tutorial coming shortly uh, for the same thing using Inkscape and RD Works. Thanks very much and have a great day, folks. Mm -hmm.